Hey, welcome everybody to this webinar. We'll be starting shortly. Just give us a minute for another people to arrive and then we'll be starting. Welcome. Welcome on this Wednesday afternoon for another episode of our Wacom webinar series. Before we head into our talk with Glenn Southern about VR and how you can fit it into a workflow using Wacom products, let me share some very basic housekeeping rules with you to make it a more enjoyable um, experience for all of us on board. Um, the webinar is going to last for roughly about an hour. We will have um, 50 minutes for the actual webinar and presentation and demo session and a good 10 minutes for Q&A towards the end. For the Q&A and your questions, please use the Q&A functionality um, in Zoom. You'll find the um, icon in the menu toolbar of Zoom, as you probably have used many times before. So please do not use the chat functionality for your questions because sometimes the chat gets um, a little bit messy and it's hard for us to follow up and Q&A actually allows us to address your questions um, either on the fly or consolidated towards the end. Um, we try to answer all of the questions um, as far as possible. Otherwise, we will be sharing a recap of the session via email uh, in a few days and we will make sure that within that recap, um, all open questions are addressed and answered. Um, yes, that's actually it. As I mentioned, the session is going to be recorded. There will be a recap of this as a video later on, shared via email. Um, so that's about it. Or maybe one more thing about the actual experience. Um, do play around with the gallery view and speaker view in the viewing options of Zoom because we'll be doing screen share and uh, Glenn is also going to do a demonstration um, with a VR headset. So do play around with those uh, settings. There's a slider in between the two windows that you can adjust um, the windows of the video signal. Okay, who are we? Um, you probably know about Wacom, you've heard about us. Um, we've been in the industry for roughly 40 years. Um, we are a pioneer of the digital pen input technology. So every time that you're struggling to bring something across a keyboard uh, on a computer, you'll probably end up using a digital pen and hopefully that's ours. Um, with us today and uh, helping us to make this happen today is uh, Primo IT. They're a specialist um, for IT and AV, AV in education and corporate solutions, um, offering hardware, software, and consultancy, consultancy and support where needed. Uh, do check them out if you don't know them, and they're a really rich source of information and support. And with us today is Glenn Southern. Gosh, I don't even know where to start uh, introducing you. Probably you're best doing it yourself in a second. Yeah, um, he's, he's, he's a good Wacom friend and ambassador. He's, he's curious in so many ways um, that he was one of the very first people that I knew to be digging heavily into the creative use of VR. Um, and yes, we're very, very happy to have him here on board. So without much further ado, I'm going to leave it to you, Glenn. Enjoy the show um, and yes, reach out to us via, via Q&A and talk to you later at the session. Excellent. Thanks, Ewan. So uh, hello, everybody. Um, so by way of introduction, uh, I've, been doing, um, I've been doing lives for about eight days um, solid now. Um, hang on. Am I muted? No, you're... All right, it says I'm you're muted. You're good. 
apologize for that. I've got a big red mute button next to me. Huh? Um, <laughs> I've been doing lives for about eight days. And as you can tell, I'm, I don't even know if I'm muted or not. Um, so uh, the reason I've been doing those is I work with, with uh, Wacom a lot, have done for probably 15 years now. Um, and I run a small company in the north of England, northwest of England. So yes, we are locked down. Um, we're in the highest extremist levels of lockdown. But um, for a VR artist, it's not a huge problem. Um, we've, we've been doing these uh, sessions and I've been working. Um, we did one in Sweden yesterday and all weekend we were doing a, a festival that, that Wacom are always involved in. And the reason we do them is uh, obviously to, to, to get the message out there about new and innovative creative tools. VR is um, a, a huge part of our business now and Wacom is a big part of our business so the the two merging together is is, is fantastic and Wacom are heavily involved with the software that I'm going to show today which is Gravity Sketch so um, me personally I'm a, I'm a digital sculptor we work on TV film game um, anything where a digital asset is required um, and we, we generally focus on um, stuff for, we get our work out of London and, and, and America and, and we, we, we mix our time um, depending on the, the we, we look for creative projects really and hence why I work with Wacom a lot because of their creative hardware um, and I obviously work around companies like Primo IT so obviously I'm, I'm, I'm always advising on where to buy hardware and where to get the next tool from or what the, the, the next tool is. So it's been, um, th th these, these webinars are fantastic to be able to show some of the stuff that, that we're using in the industry and we teach it as well. And so it's all very relevant. It's not stuff that's, you know, it's not things that were around three or four years ago. Some of the stuff, as I found out to my cost today, is being updated regularly, you know, so I've, I've got um, a new version um, of certain software today and obviously it just gets updated all the time, which is, is brilliant because it means you're using cutting edge stuff. So what's today about then? Um, so we're going to look at three things really. So firstly, I'm going to I'm going to quickly talk through a little bit about the Wacom tech. So for anyone that, that isn't familiar with these larger Wacom devices, um, I'm going to switch between the different parts of the video. So um, I'll just literally show you this is this is my Wacom. This is a 32, and I've got a 24 next to me here. So that's the 32 inch Wacom. Uh, it's a touch sensitive device. So th th this is pretty much what we live on. And the great thing now and what today is all about is, be, is that we're going to mix using this device with VR and we jump in and out as we need to. So um, after I've covered off um, or, or a little bit about this and the express remote, which is this thing, uh, again, a huge part of what we do. I used, I literally, I, don't, I only thought about it w w with this um with this webinar really is this, this is something I use every day. I use this as much as I use the pen technology and it gets forgotten about. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how configurable this is. Then I'm going to quickly jump into gravity sketch and we're going to quickly look at the, um, the, the, the actual software itself. So we're going to, I'm just going to switch back to that camera for a minute. Um, so then we're going to look at sketching with the pen after I've described how to use it. We'll only do a few minutes of that. And then what we'll do is we'll switch over and I'll put the headset on and I'll talk along the way about the, the type of hardware we're using. So this is, this is a, a Rift S and I'll, I'll explain why we use it and, and what we use it for. And then I'll do a live, sort of like the last 20 minutes, I'll make something a little bit more robust and something that I can, I can dive right in and just ha basically show you how, how, how we use it. So now what's interesting about the, the way I, I run these sessions is I, I can quite happily take questions along the way. So if you feel that there's a point that, that where you want to ask a question, I'm more than happy to answer those rather than waiting to the end. Um, it's completely up to you. So let's just, before we start on the hardware, let's just, let me just share my screen again. Okay, so you should be able to, someone will tell me if you can't, so uh, you should be able to see that screen. So, so what I wanted to do is start with the end product. So we, we're obviously modelers and we're, we're um, concept artists and designers in, in my company. That's, I've got a very small company, there's only six of us. But what we make is whatever our client wants or whatever we, we want to make for our current project. So these kind of things, I'm going to show you a lot of mechanical things because Gravity Sketch is very useful for that. So these are what we call concepts. So if you're a, an engineer and you're watching this, you, you'll be looking and thinking, well, that engine's not working or that sprocket doesn't 
fit into that flange and this thing doesn't do that. Well, that's not what we're doing here. We, we use Gravity Sketch and, and the Cintiq, obviously, as a, crea as a creative platform to design and conceive and ideate. So we literally start with sketches, which you're going to see. We start with what we call blocked volumes. So we might just make this stuff up with, with a large chunk of geometry. And the fact that we're doing it in VR or, or, or even on, the, on the, the, the Cintiq before we move to VR, it just means it's really fast and it means it's really loose early on. What we do with that at the end of it or what you would do with it or what your clients or if you're in, in education, what your, your students would do is, is, is entirely up to them. So it can move through this kind of geometry level um, and, 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 and it's several different types of geometry. So for anyone who's interested and anyone who, who knows anything about the, the tech, there's NURBS, which is spline based modeling, which goes into programs like Rhino and into programs like Fusion 360. And it's proper NURBS patches or, or non-uniform rational B splines, they're called. It's basically, it's the technology that you'd see in CAD a lot. And people like uh, Craig, who's on the call from Primo, would be able to talk to you about that kind of end use in the software uh, what it's used for but it's also got polygons in it so it's got thing called subdivision modeling so you can do creative modeling in, in a number of different ways um, whether it be CAD and going out to one particular pipeline or whether it be the you know more like this on the screen now more concepty and more rough it can go out to ZBrush because it can just then be sculpted on. It can go out to Maya and be used. And, and quite often you, you wouldn't use this kind of model and this geometry for the final end result. But there's no reason to. If you're making it and it's good geometry, it's not just for the concept. You can probably use it. Um, if, for the end result. And we do a lot of this kind of concept in where we'll 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 make the whole vehicle and we'll use it for an advert or for this this one was for a an animation so we've done a lot of the pre-work because we've made it in vr and we've and we've, we've built it then we can we can use that geometry we might clean it in in the next level of of you know we might make as in make it better geometry in maya or or, or whatever program we we decide to use but the fact of the matter is we've done the hard work and now it's just it's the tech work that follows it so and these are just examples of, again, I picked, I picked just one thing. So I picked, I picked kind of vehicles. We do a lot of characters and creatures and much more uh, organic. All of these are quite organic, actually. And, but we generally do more stuff like that. Um, and again, for film, for opening titles, a lot of work for Sky, that we do a lot of logos and, and, and that mechanical stuff. And it's, and it's all the same. If, we, if we're concepting it, this is, this is how we would make it. So and that spider that I showed earlier a few moments ago, this was one of the, I think this was the third or fourth model I made with Gravity Sketch. And visually, it's got a lot going on. We'd, we'd say it's visual interest or, or if you remember Star Wars and you remember how they, they made the, the Death Star and, and all of the bits on the Death Star were called Greeble. And that basically just means give me something visually interesting. You don't have to focus on every part. But we do that a lot. So as you can see here, this this mechanically would not work. But from a from a concept point of view, from a from a design point of view, and a very quick render, um, this is fantastic. And it's a great thing to show your clients, or if you're a client, to, to to show other people because you can get your ideas down really really quickly. And the great thing about this is uh, that took 57 minutes. And the reason I know that is because we were we recorded it. Um, so to make something like that in under an hour and then be able to render it is quite useful in, in lots of different ways. This is a more steampunky um, kind of bike. That looks like it's obviously real. Well, it's not. That's, that's the same model come, come from Gravity Sketch straight into a, a program called Keyshot that, again, some of you will know. And then it's just rendered in one of in one of my rooms. It's this is the, like the dirty room we call it. It's the paint studio. So we just render it to look like it's in a real environment. So again, we're 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 doing what we do all the time, which is we're visually cheating. We're just making it look, um, you know, like like we want it to in the real world. So, so that was a quick whiz was around the kind of things we're talking about today. Again, I haven't covered all the organics. So where would we start with that? So um, what I'll do is I'll just switch the um, I'll switch the screen share off for a moment, and I'll just switch to the overhead camera to show you a little bit about. Let's talk about the Cintiq a little bit first of all. So okay, so we've got um, 
again, this is a 32 and I, I normally recommend the 24 for nearly everybody because the 32, I have to say, um, I do adore this machine. It's a lovely machine, but 32 inches diagonally is a huge piece of screen real estate to use. It, it, it's, a, it's an immense 4K screen. So while I can have stuff down here at the bottom corner and I can work and draw on here and, and have stuff and references up here, sitting down on it, it isn't my favorite experience. Now the 24 is just a little bit smaller and both sitting up and standing and uh, any kind of, uh, I mean, I'll show it, but it'll move it off the screen. You've got full rotation. You've got, you know, push it up and down. It, it, it's really, really flexible on. This is a flex arm. Um, and again, th this is something I use. This isn't a, a promotion to try and sell any product. It's, it's actually what we use in the studio every day. Um, the, the, the 32 is fantastic for presenting on it and it's fantastic for client work and large architectural drawings and things like that. 24 is the one I would always say, go and have a look at. Um, it's the one that most people set as their thing of desire. Now this thing that's plugged in, I've got a wire in it just because I, I, I want to keep it, um, I want to keep it charged for the presentation. But once it's charged, you, in fact, it might be better if I just turned it on. Um, once you've got it charged, um, it's, it's a remote, in fact, it is fully charged now, so we can take that away. So this is called the Express Remote. I'll try and stay still for you. And what this does is this replaces your keyboard uh, for certain, well, basically these are just keys. And you've got the rocker here. You might be familiar with um, the other type of um, graphic device that, that Wacom are really famous for, which is the Intuos. And that has a little wheel on it like this, or the older ones do. And this allows us to change between different settings. I map it a certain way for the software that I'm using, to, you know, for that job. And there's, um, it's sorry, the camera seems to be hunting quite a bit there. So I, I apologize if it, if it's you know, not, not easy to see, but there's a, there's, um, a thing called the Wacom tablet properties. If you just search Wacom, once you've installed your device, you can basically, um, uh, adjust your settings in here looking at my screen here it's difficult for you to see so i'm going to stop that screen share and i will um let me switch it out for you doesn't want to let me stop so and i'll switch the video for you We'll get there in a moment, folks. Sorry about that. Switch it over to the right one. There we go. Sorry about that. So hopefully you can see that a little bit better now. So the two things that I'm focusing on, there's the Wacom desktop center that comes up and that gives us the ability to change the touch settings, the pen settings, and then the express remote. And every device that you've got attached will be obviously including this one, the, uh, the the remote will be listed in here. And what I do is I quickly, first of all, I go and find out in here, have I got the, the settings for the piece of software that I'm going to use? So once you come into the uh, tablet remote properties, there's a little plus sign at the top here, and that just gives you the ability to look to see if, if your um, software is supported. And if it is, you just click it and basically it gives you, it gives you all of the settings in here. So for the, for example, the EK remote, I've got in there, again, I don't know whether you can see because it's such a large screen. I've got ZBrush and Maya. Um, I can just go plus and I can have a look down and if Gravity Sketch is in there, we'll take that, which I'm not sure if it is on this one. Might not be on this one. And if it is, you add it in. If it's not, then we carry on. Uh, inner keys, let's move move it up here a little bit. So basically it's, it's all of mine for ZBrush, for Maya, for Gravity Sketch, and pretty much everything else that I use. These inner keys here, which are, if you can see the little screen of me, it's, it's the strip down the center. I always map them the same, which is Shift, Alt, uh, control and space and that gives me the basic keyboard commands for, for, for replacing that bit of the keyboard so I do keep um, a keyboard underneath <coughs> but it's too hard to reach most of the time 
so it's better just to map that to to the remote and uh, give you that ability straight away and then from there i i depending on whether it's photoshop or or again cinema 4d i just map the 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 brush sizes to the wheel i would map the um the main modifiers that that particular software uses um to to the individual keys and i've got another eight keys there so i've got the four strip in the middle which is basically there i've got ring keys which are all of these around the top and I've got the outer keys. So we'll, we, I won't let labor on that one. Um, what I'll do is I'll jump straight into Gravity Sketch and we'll, we'll talk about a little bit about how this works with that. So if there's any questions at this point while I'm just switching in, you can by all means ask them. Um, and I'll just launch into Gravity Sketch and, and, and start talking about what, what it is you're seeing. So um, hopefully you can see that screen there and what you probably just saw me do was go into something called steam and i'm sure some of you will know that and some of you won't but steam is a a way to uh, get apps it's like an app store for for games and uh, um all, all sorts of uh, you know different software but mainly games um, and gravity sketch is available from things like the oculus store it's available through steam and i think you, you think there is a way to get it standalone as well um, we certainly use one in, in, in the studio that's just run straight from the desktop. So what I did was I accessed through my, my own Steam account and then straight in here. And the great thing about Gravity Sketch that not everybody knows is it started on an iPad. So if it started on an iPad, that means there was a 2D, um, at, at some point it was, there was obviously a 2D part of it. So the, um, the, 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 iPad then evolved into VR, and then we obviously got things like this ability to use it on the on the Cintiq. So um, uh, in here, you would normally dive straight into VR, and, th and that's what we'll do in a moment. So um, let me just switch that timer off. So I'm always conscious about how little time I have on these things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this on, which is called tablet mode. And when you're on the Cintiq, you need to go straight into this mode, first of all. Uh, and then switch it off later on. You can just, with, with most versions, you can just dive straight into the headset. Um, but if you want to start the sketching, which is the thing we want to quickly talk about today, then we'll do that. So tablet mode, and then we'll dive straight in here. Now that is very, very similar to what we would see in our VR um, headset. The, the, the difference being is if I, if I just literally draw a stroke and I'll show you now. So we've got all of the tools that I'm going to show you in a minute across the top here. And we've got ink and stroke, we've got revolve tool, and we've got a volume tool. I'm only going to show you two or three of these because we, we are, you know, incredibly short of time. Um, what I'll do is I'll just show you the, the, the basics of the sketch tool. So if you literally use the pen, I'm not, I'm not going to change the sizes or anything. I'm using the, 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 the EK remote as well to, um, I'll just turn it off by mistake to control what I'm doing. So that, that allows me to, to, to spin it around, depending on how you configure it, you, you, your sketching is then controlled. Now I'm only doing, um, I'll, I'll do the basics of a bike and I'm just using a basic, basic stroke here. Um, if you want to look at it in another angle, you've got a view cube. So you're already working in a 3d environment. Um, what you probably would use this for is to map out your your sh shapes initially with the sketch and then as you as you move forward and as you develop it you would move that into 3d so this is like when i use alias or when i use uh, any any of the the the, the more sketch based programs um you've got lots of options up here so you've got your, your ability to change the colors i don't really do this a lot at these early stages simply because it's nice just to map it out like as if you're sketching you've got blockier tools here as well which i don't use too much at this stage um so from a sketch point of view you would want to just map out the 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 rough idea of the shape that you're going to design again you've, you can you can move it all around you can go to this and you can actually start moving these components around what you would always do if you're doing this is switch that on, which is mirror. And that means we can start designing in, in symmetrical. Um, now we've, we've got the 
the um, we've got it set to um, the other angle, which I'm not going to use. So just bear with me one second. I was looking for this here, which is the uh, history button. Um, but what we would what we would want to do is say, right, how how much of a, of a uh, the, the design are we going to do in this? And how much of the design are we going to do in VR? And which is, and, and when do we switch back? So one thing I generally don't do is, I generally don't do things like the revolve tools. I don't do the wheels in here. I generally switch into VR and go and go heavily in the, the, the creation tools in VR. What I do use a lot for mapping this stuff out is this one, which is the volume tool. Now the volume tool is like, um, it's almost a bit like a sculpting tool in other programs where you can build up volume, uh, obviously, because it's a volume tool. So where, as you draw and then come back on your own stroke, it will fill in. So if anyone uses programs like any, any kind of nerves based program or spline based program like, like AutoCAD or, or, or Rhino or, or Fusion 360, this geometry, even though it's on a, we're just mapping it to a 2D plane here. Um, you can use this geometry uh, as you move forward. So if you start, you know, if you draw and pull it around like this, you'll end up getting that wh wherever you end that line, you end up giving yourself that piece of geometry. And you can, obviously you can, everything is stroke based. So it's much more, if you think of it, much more like Illustrator than it is like Photoshop. So everything I've done is an individual component. And we can we can delete it, we can move it, we can. Um, there's amazing things that we use a lot like this, which is a transparency layer, and we are, have obviously got layers. So what the general pipeline or the process normally is is, we would do our rough out, our very very basic block out as as simply as we can. Then we would do another layer, and then we would do say a more detailed block out. And we might start doing things like, right, say, for example, this was going to be a bike and we want to think about any kind of the, um, uh, sorry, I'm not on the right tool, I'm not on the right sketch tool. Uh, start thinking about the, um, do we want any of the cabling doing? Then you can start thinking about using the sketch tool with another color and where, you know, you can even annotate on it at this stage and you can start writing in to, you know notes for other people because the big thing that uh is quite exciting in the industry now is that this tool is a co-creation tool as well so as much as i'm just using it for sketching and i'm just thinking about my planes and i'm just thinking about the the, the basics of it you can bring another designer in. i've done lots of videos in this last month about how we would how we would then um jump into a co-creation environment and then be art directed or be the art director um, and that's again look 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 into gravity sketch in, in in that regard if that's something that you're you're interested in or something that you think in is something you could you know benefit from in the future then it's it's well worth it's well worth a look so Again, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time. So I, I, there's plenty to explore here. I would suggest that you, you know, get, Gravity Sketch is very cheap and it's worth getting it just to have a look at it on the Cintiq, even if you don't ever go into VR. Um, the, the, you know, I've hardly touched on the tools, but obviously I, I only have a limited time. Now I could just jump into the headset um, and this is where I was having the problem. So if you if you've got a question while I just move this into VR, is Jeroen there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I'm here. Um, oh, and we have something popping up in the Q and A's. Hang on, let me check there. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull out of this, so it it uh, it will kill it for a moment. So I'm just gonna kill my feed for a second, so I can answer anything while we're we're talking. No problem. Um, so there's a question in the Q&As about the availability of this video. Yes, it's going to be uploaded on YouTube, I presume, and you will be able to share it from there. Great. Won't be a second, I'm just... He's 
it's just better if I stop it um, and restart, and restart it. I'm sorry it. if the video is not particularly nice. So No worries. And for everybody who's wondering what those um, artifacts are on the screen that you see, that is the basically the, the digital reflection of the blue screen that Glenn is using. So uh, occasionally you see stuff being picked up by the blue screen on the Cintiq. Okay, so I've switched over now so we can have a little chat. So let's have a little chat about the hardware before I dive right in and share the screen again. So we've got an Oculus Rift S here. This is the one that's been around for about a year and a half, two years, I think. And I'm going to use these, which are controllers. You get two of these. As of yesterday, and this is really interesting for anyone who's, who's thinking of getting into this in any way, uh, Oculus brought out the Oculus Quest 2. Now we got ours yesterday and we've been, been trying it all this morning. And that's basically the same as this. It looks light gray, but it's, it's untethered for the start of things and you can then tether it. So basically Gravity Sketch runs inside that headset without the expense of a, of a 1500 or two grand PC. And that's quite amazing. So you can basically plug it in when you need it and when you need the power, plug it in when you want to use the Cintiq and pull it off and use it wherever you want without the tethering. And that might generate some questions because it's quite exciting to be able to do that. Um, I, I like this one, the Rift S, because there's no sensors. The cameras are all uh, in here. Um, so you don't have the older ones that used to have sensors around the room. Um, so it is, the, it, it, it is um, the, probably the most flexible one. So let me just jump in and I'll just tell you, can you tell me if this is going to share correctly? We'll let you know. So hopefully now you should be able to start seeing my screen. Yes, we see the screen share showing you in VR. Okay, fantastic. So my left hand seems to be stuck. So. Okay, so this is this is now VR, um, and I'm I'm left-handed, incidentally. So you can you see that in the middle of the screen, Jeroen? Is that is that? We see I your remote, you. yes, circling Fantastic. around, and so the palette. I'm just going to back out a little bit, and I'm just going to bring in <coughs> any of the sketches that we've we've done. So, just give me a second just to realign everything. So when you bring a sketch in, this is the one we did uh, slightly just before the, the, the last one. Uh, I, I showed you that we had the ability to make it transparent. So if you're doing a sketch layer like that and you want to bring in other layers, you can lock that layer and go straight into um, sketching again or doing exactly what we did outside. Well, a couple of things that you'd always do is remember I, I talked about mirroring. So you'd always make sure that mirror plane is back on. What that means is, say you've blocked out your first, we did a first pass, we did a, you know, we did it, and we've now made that transparent. And you can now still edit that. You can go in and edit the stuff from the Cinti. You can go in and edit the, 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 the stuff from, from here. You can delete everything with a click of a button. Um, you can hide and show all the different layers. And then you can start adding in much more of a, of a of a more defined model. So remember I showed you the this tool, which is the volume tool. I'll change color so you can see each, each layer will do a different color. So again, if we've done volumes once, that's fine. But now we can use those volumes or we can make new volumes. A bit darker on that one. And I can use it in much more of a 3D way. So now you're seeing where that sketch, those sketch lines that we started, we, we, we might not even need them now. We might change them. We might jump back out and do more sketching. We might uh, adjust it so it looks uh, completely different. And remember, I'm still not doing core geometry at the minute. I'm doing just the block out. What we will do is, what, and what's really cool about this bit is, is when we jump into the, to the main geometry. So I'm going to show you a couple of little things. So this one here, for example, the Revolve tool, you will have seen this in other 3D programs. If I snap it, with, there's, there's obviously an XYZ axis, you can see the red one there. If I want to start thinking about a wheel, for example, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll just do that one a little bit transparent as well. And we'll lock that one for the moment. We'll make another one just for the wheels and the, and the more permanent geometry. 
So position it where we want it. You can put a floor in uh, and you can change all of the render settings in here so that you've got like a, a background or a studio or something like that. Um, uh, we, we said we were happy there. I'll just change the color. The color is really, really important. And the reason the color is important is because when you come out of this software, you can use the color to uh, define the material in that other program. So uh, basically what that means, if you take it to Maya or Cinema 4D or something like that, you would be able to then um, define, say, all of the chrome with the chrome that you set in here. So it is really, really uh, crucial that you, you, you know, you use that sort of facility uh, or that sort of tool um, as, as much as, as needed. Now, straight away, we're starting to think about much more, uh, more realistic geometry. And we, and we can get into, we can go back and even use, um, let's just make some, we'll use the same tool, but we'll make, uh, we'll change that to a gray. And we'll, uh, so that would be again, a different type of gray. Um, and we'll go just double check with the settings are what we needed and we'll make some, some, let's just do some, um, forks or so front forks for a bike. Okay. I'm going to keep moving along. This is huge. So why is it huge? Well, it doesn't need to be. So with this, this, this thing is called a grabber. I can pick all of these components and group them, make them smaller. What is great about all of this is that these can be used as brushes, so I can just use them as a repeat, should I need to. Um, so for example, if we just wanted to make these and use, use them, in fact, tell you what, let's make, forget that, we'll make a trike, we'll make something completely different. <coughs> so instantly we've changed our mind there. Uh, let's just make a couple of smaller components. So this would be something like a, some nuts and bolts and stuff we can use later. So we're almost now making, a, 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 again, I was talking about Greeble before, wasn't I? So this is like a Greeble pack where you can uh, make some uh, components that we can use over and over again for lots of different reasons. You might want to use these up here. You might want to start thinking about the volume in a different way there. And now we get onto the tool that I probably like the most. And this is something, if you're in any way into, into designing and creating in, in, in 3D, you'd want to look into this. And this is subdivision modeling. Now, subdivision modeling, for anyone who knows, this was, this was a Pixar kind of algorithm uh, back in the 90s. So it was used on a little short called Jerry's Game. What it does is it smooths out soft ge geometry. So what do I mean by that? So I'll just change the color to... You're in, what's Wacom's favorite color, would you say? Is there a color that we... we? We are not only operating system agnostic, but also color agnostic. <laughs> we love all, all colors. colors. Yeah, I should have not. Right, we're going to go with red because that's orange is my favorite, but we'll go with red. Okay, so basically, I'm going to throw a cube down. Okay, doesn't really impress anyone when, when you start doing that. But if you press this button, the blue button on your non dominant hand, that starts showing things that we might be familiar with, which is points, edges, and vertices. So as I brought that to the center line, now you can see why I would do that because I've now got the ability to move it point by point. I can split loops. So now I'm thinking, right, this is, this is a tank now in terms of a, you know, I obviously mean a, um, a petrol tank or a gas tank, not a uh, Sherpa or Sherman or Tiger tank. Now, what was I meaning about that algorithm? Well, if you take that and you look on this hand here, you can tear these panels off, by the way, and that makes it quite, you can, you can build up your own sort of like little set of interfaces. But in here, I've got this subdivision. And what that means is now I've got full subdivision modeling within the VR app. So what, what that is, is what you see used on films and TV. So subdivision modeling is the core of most modern day modeling in the, in the M&E sector. So if you take this, for example, this is the back face let me just bring it around a little bit. I'll just split it there. What, what I'm doing there is, I'll zoom in for you, I'm adding in splits, and that gives me more polygons. So if I split it there, and we look at this bit, if I do this, 
that means I'm adding geometry on the fly out there. You can do things like crease. There's a lot in here. If, if this is something that is, is, is new to you, then, then none of this, you know, this sort of stuff won't mean a lot to you. If you're in any way involved in modeling or selling modeling software, then you really should be taking notice of this because it changes a lot of things for us as, as modelers. It, it means that we've got tools that we've only ever had in, in programs like Maya. I've got the ability to smooth. So I'm, what I'm doing there is I'm grabbing all those control vertices and I'm pulling them and it's tightening them. That's, that's smoothing them down. I can carry on under here. I can keep extruding. And I can scale. See my, so basically what I did there, I took two hands. I'll, I'll undo it and show you again. So take that one from underneath, bring it down. And with two hands, I can scale it down. So if you want to make it a little bit more, a bit freaky, obviously I've put like a, a bottom fin on it, which you probably wouldn't want. But, but obviously that's, that's for this design is what I'm choosing. Do you remember we talked about, let's put some handlebars on it. So let's change the tool. So we'll go purple button. We'll change it to stroke with, um, we'll leave it like this. We'll leave it so we can just draw it. We'll change one of these um, settings here. So we'll go maybe reflective material and a gray. So that'll give us that. So now I maybe even go a bit lighter than that. So this is like, let's call this Chrome, okay? And then I've got this ability to just draw out the handlebars and I can pick them up and move them. I can experiment, which, which is where this, this is really, really useful for, for, for me. I don't like the color, so I'll change it to a darker. And um, I want to do, um, I'll do some, little bit of this sort of stuff. It looks like a kid's bike there, so that's not working for me. So if it's not working for me, what can I do? So instead of deleting it, what I can do is hit the blue button. And because it's nerves based, you get these, which are called CVs or control vertices. And now I can edit it at the point level. And, and this is where it's starting to, 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 to get a little bit technical now, because look, I can change with a push and, and and pull of my thumb, I can change the curvature across that. So that's like, for anyone who knows what a Bezier curve is, that is like I'm changing the handles on a Bezier curve. So the maths that's driving this is, is stuff that we're used to seeing in, in, in other programs, but it's super, super powerful. Um, it looks a little bit like it's not at first, but once you start getting into what's in there, it, it's incredible. So what else can we do? Remember the volume tool? Um, so say we've got the volume tool here, we'll put it back to point mode, but we'll do this, which is planar. And now I can draw planes. And why is that useful? So if I need to do a specific, say a component for a, um, here for the accelerator and the brake, I haven't got, some, I have got so much on that. So that will be quite useful. I can do more, um, more complex so I'm, I'm obviously rushing here i'm not trying to do this in any way accurately um we can start adding that do you remember we did these buttons uh, these things that i said we would use as as nuts and bolts so we can add these in we can use uh we can change the color of these and change the color of these and we can start doing things like there's your handlebar grip so doing, doing this is, is, is nothing radical. You know, I do this in 3D all the time. But what's different here is the speed and the flexibility of what I'm designing. And think back to the very first picture that I showed you. So think about the fact that this might look, you know, it, it might look a little bit like it's, it, it's low res or it's not, um, the render quality isn't where you'd want it to be. But bear in mind what this can render like. It, you know, it doesn't take much to make this into an amazing render. Um, and that's where you, you know, if you are going to go into the render side, that's where doing the greeble and the visual interest is always, is always really useful. Let's add in some more mechanics down here at the back, mechanical parts at the back. So for that, remember, we need the volume tool and we'll do something like the, the rear assembly here. So again, this is completely made up, but um it starts to look pretty cool once you start getting a, a, a chunk of it together if it's not working for you hit the button and you can change a the points and b see this one you can pull out volume this way as well 
So I, I do love showing this software because it, it, it's in, in, incredible uh, that, that we're, we're even able to do this now. Um, it, you know, th th this would have been science fiction for me a few years ago. Um, let's, let's just adjust this. So see what I'm doing now. I'm adjusting the things I've already made, um, which makes it even more flexible. So we, we can just use things we've, we've, we've spent time on. Say I don't like this, um, I can flick through to the components and I can just delete them. So I can go back and I can say that seat shouldn't have been like that. I, I probably wanted it a different way. So we'll, we'll adjust it down here and we'll bring in, let's use that volume tool again. One thing that's interesting about VR is um, I've got a clock there on my, on my hand. I, lo I lose my time every time I come in here. I, I kind of get lost with what I'm doing. Um, simply because I have so much fun. Um, but I can't even say that I've, I've not noticed the time because it's there on my wrist. So we'll end that one there. And we'll, again, we'll bring the volume out. So this is going to be a seat, perhaps. Again, you could turn symmetry off. Um, you could uh, basically do this non-symmetrically if you wanted to. In fact... I might even do that a little bit differently because that's that's almost like a racing bike seat on the back of a chopper. So there's a lot of snapping options that I haven't covered in here. Um, a lot of ways to make this more accurate. Again, I'm, I'm rushing to, <coughs> to give us a bit of show and tell rather than trying to do anything um, more accurately. Um, but you can, I think you can get, you can get a feel of where I'm going with, with, with all of this. Um, if I wanted to uh, basically add all of the fact, fact no, I'll take it away. I'll, I'll, I'll do that one properly because I was rushing a bit too much then. I don't want to. So I'm going to use this again, subdivision cube. And we'll make a seat. So we'll sit the guy. I didn't, I didn't like what I was doing there. I didn't feel like it was working for me. So we'll work it back. Jeroen, as I'm getting towards the last 10 or 15 minutes, I can, I can start taking questions. Um, if there's anything about the, the, the yes. software. Yes. Um, I'm just going to do so almost, almost 10 to six or 10 to five your time. Yep. Um, we had one question and that was the screen share that we're seeing from gravity sketch is a bit choppy and low on frame rate. So at least that's how it appears. Uh, but I remember that the experience of Gravity Sketch itself, if you're in there, is actually very, very nice and and and, and pleasant. Yeah, there's and zero lag. Your nose. So this might there's, be something yeah. um, that is due to the video capacities of Zoom. Yeah, there's literally uh, zero lag. There, there's the frame rate is. I don't actually know what the current frame rate is here, but I can. I, I mean, this is only a fairly low res model that we're, we're playing with. But there is literally zero. Like I, I, I'm moving it around it. Like there's nothing. There's literally nothing at all. So the thing with VR is, uh, and the thing that does happen is, if you get lag and you get a frame rate drop, or certainly for me and a lot of people that I know, uh, it can make you feel sick. Um, and it's been a it's been a problem for years and years. But in the last sort of like two or three years, I'll be honest with you. I haven't experienced it with any of the Oculus kit and certainly not with Gravity Sketch. So that, that can only be what's coming down the, 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 the Zoom feed. Actually, the, the opening sequence we just had with you was the first time in a long, long time that I actually saw your face without one of those masks. <laughs> you know, some because you, you spend a lot of time in there, don't you? We do now, yeah. We, I mean, we've, we, we're very, very fortunate that we, we got a grant, a UK government grant to work with Gravity Sketch. So that, that meant that I, I was very, very embedded in it. And I'm also doing an MA in, uh, in Leeds Trinity University. So I, I see this as, as much as I'm a, a digital sculptor by trade and I run a company that makes digital assets, I see VR and collaboration as being possibly the way of, of my entire future. You know, either teaching this what, what I'm trying to explore is, um, again, I can't really show you in here because there's only me in here, but I, <laughs> I like to explore the fact that, you know, I could be in here with you. I, in fact, this entire meeting that we're doing now could be done inside here. Right. Um, you know, and you've got all of these tools, you know, like the photography tools uh, and the, the annotation tools. 
you've got the ability to put us in a room so you could go in here i can see i'm adjusting the lighting now we're in a, a different workspace um, and there's lots of this th this is changing all the time in gravity sketch and what, what i like about it is that i can see a massive potential for me as a as a tutor and as a um, as an educator to do it in VR and COVID has really accelerated that. So, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time with you guys, with Wacom and with, you know, with, with, um, and, and with companies like Gravity Sketch and Adobe with Medium now, and I've got such a great system to be able to teach remotely and COVID has forced us into that, but we, we were looking at already doing that and removing our training room. So it, it's just, it's just, Good timing, really. Yeah. Right. You can see PBR. We can see uh, HDRI reflections there. They've introduced that, um, and this really, e even in app, this this is quite useful for for getting some stuff. Um, so we got uh, a question in um, about the collaboration. Um, please remind me. So, if you go into collaboration mode, do you actually see the other person? Yes. So, so what happens in collab mode is you, you, what, what we've started to do is um, make it in a room scenario. So if you look at me here now, I'm quite ethereal. I'm floating around. So if we were to put on, um, let's just go right back to the start. If we put a stage floor on, it's the wrong way around actually, but it doesn't matter. If that was the stage floor now and I lock the vertical like this, so I can't go off vertical now. I can basically put myself a room around me. And, that, and, and that's how collaboration looks when you go in there. But what the other person looks like is an avatar of a headset and the name of the person. Right. And I'm sure that will change. And if you look at other apps, there's lots of different ways of doing that. But as I'm teaching now, I can, I can show you like a little bit of a, an example of how I, I do. I, I'm doing a lot of teaching at the moment in, in here. Um, let me see if I can do it. Turn that off. So, actually, I put it with symmetry on, but it doesn't really matter. So, I'm, all I'm doing is making an approximation of the laser pointer. <laughs> so, basically, what I do is I, I, I have a, a laser pointer of whatever description. I have the thing we're working on on a desk here. I have design walls here. So I bring in images like um, this. This is a clean install. Um, so I don't even know if I can show you, but let me show you something like this, for example. This this might really get people interested. So if this was my room and that's my design wall and you're over here, so you're the bike for now, for, for want of a better word, I'm discussing and annotating and I'm, and I'm working on my design wall. I might have another wall here with the ideas and laid out here on the desk is the iterations of the models right. that I've worked on. So as much as I'm making a hacky, you know, I only, I'm only showing you a rough estimation of what it's like here. But imagine all of these tools I've just shown you and you're in the room and that headset is the other person or six of the other people. And that's incredible. That, that, that really does make it a, a special thing. Yeah. And I remember it is also possible to actually work together on the same object simultaneously, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you, you and I would be, would be working on, uh, I mean, I'm just adding all sorts of rubbish now. Um, <laughs> you, you, you could literally, I could take this wheel, uh, again, remember it's on the symmetry, and you, if I drop it, if I'm not holding it, you can go and get it. So you would come in over here and you would grab it and you'd work on it. So right. I did right. a session with Jamma Jurabai, I made a dragon. The first time I went into it and it just blew my mind. It was it was just incredible. So I was working on, I was sketching up. So sort of like, um, let me just go back into it. We've got a few minutes to just talk about it. Let's move this over here. So I'd be saying, right, you know, and you would get a dragon in somehow. Right? I'd say, right, you know, I'll do, I'll do your block out. I'll give you the, I'll give you something to, to start with. So there's a chest, there's a spine, there's some back legs. There's some arms. Here's the start of the wings. So if you could, um, if you could now surface tool these for me, could you know? And, and I'll work on the tail. And can you? So so whoever it is would come over here, and they'd be on the exact opposite side. They can grab all of these parts. They can then grab the surface tool and start saying right i'll draw the wings and i'll so while i'm I, i'm literally any size i want to be so right. i can be under here 
And this is why filmmakers like it because you can work, you know, at set level, you can work at individual actor level. So you can see where the actors would go. You can see how this character would, you know, you can't do animation yet and you can't, you know, you can't do that kind of stuff, but just look how quick, quickly you can iterate and ideate. And that, and that's what this is all about. It's about how fast can I make my ideas? Mm. Um, and that, that, you know, that, that, that's what's exciting to me as a designer. You know, if I can thrash out the yeses and nos of a dragon within five minutes, you know, do we want horns? Do we want horns like this? Do we want no horns? Do we want these wings to be flapping? There's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible that, that we can do it, um, both organic and yeah. back to mechanical. I mean, actually, this, this creative hot mess that you're just producing here, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, is, yeah. Which, is, which is quite a lot, but it actually shows, I find, it, 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 it illustrates how um useful vr and, and and sketching in vr is because it you mentioned before so you could use it as a virtual sound stage and oh, and absolutely. and develop props and because you always have um yourself as as a as a human size reverence in vr you can immediately see if this dragon is going to be huge or just the tiny one absolutely. and with the with the motorbike and um Uh, and the monster that you have, the alien that you have in the background, you can immediately put them next to each other and say like, okay, these relate very well. And that is the same dimension proportions. Um, Absolutely. It's crazy. You're in it. It, it, it's a different, for, for a designer, it's a very strange world now because things have, you know, it, it's very difficult to, what I always say to people is learn the basics and all of this, you can come and play with it. But that, that monster in the background is actually a robot that were sketched on a, uh, just literally just sketched out. And the, and these black and white images were, how do we get this guy to fit in this robot? So what we did was we did a co-creation video where I sat in the robot and mm -hmm. I actually said, right, where do my arms go? And I actually physically moved my arms around to see if it fits inside this cockpit. So if you're, if you look at what Honda are doing with this and Ford and uh, basically every automotive manufacturer is looking at this kind of technology, they can sit in the car and unlike programs like V-RED where it's more just visualizing and seeing, um, you know, a nice render or look at the engine parts, you can go in and you can make design decisions. And if that saves just a few quid on a design choice, then it, it's already a winning, you know, solution. And if you look at, People like, if you think of automotive but and think of like Formula One, Formula One has a window every year that they're allowed to do their design changes. So they have to run at 100 miles an hour to get that window done, to get it into manufacture, to get it into prototype, to get it into manufacture, to get it on the track. Now, if you can iterate faster and get that, that out and test it and then get it into a wind tunnel, just that little bit can save millions of pounds. And that's mm. what's happening in the, in, you know, that, you know, don't, don't think that this is a toy. You don't Don't anybody think that this is just, you know, for messing around with shapes. It's, it's being used in incredibly high end real world scenarios right now. I mean, it, it, it's really a great tool to, to, to follow up on this buzzword of uh, user centric design or human centric design. Human -centered because design. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually what you're doing, right? You're designing the world or the props or the products and, and environments and, 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 and vehicles right around you. Correct, correct. And, and, and the, the good link is, for, you know, certainly for Wacom, is that everybody knows the Wacom brand. And, and, and I know that this is Gravity Sketch, not, not specifically your tool, but you're linked and you're embedded so much with it that most, most everybody I know jumps in and out on from a Cintiq because it's because you've got that ability to sketch with the pen at the higher, you know, that, you know, the 8,000 levels of sensitivity, you've got the big screen for showing and drawing and all of that. And you can jump in and out like from this environment back to your desk. So it's, it's a great fit. It's a really, it's a marriage made in heaven for a designer. If you look at footwear design, you look at uh, architecture, there's the, 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 the uses are just getting more and more every time I look. Yeah. I mean, you've spent a lot of time with Gravity Sketch. Um, I only had the chance to use it once or twice at events before. Um, and I know that it looks daunting at the beginning. Um, and you're super fast. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. But even I got the hang of it. I, I think I designed some, some 
obviously a weird looking dragon, um, which other people except me would probably not notify and recognize as a dragon, but <laughs> it is actually quite, it is quite easy to it's get the hang easy. of it, right? It's, it's super easy. Yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, as you know, I, I've trained, um, I've trained the one before I started with this was, was Adobe medium or, or Oculus medium, which is much more of a sculpting package, but I've trained how to make dogs. So dog anatomy, two students in VR so, uh, and they were, they were making full anatomically correct dogs by lunchtime. We started at 9am and then in gravity sketch, I've taught people, I've taught, um, uh, there's, I have a, a PhD student that works with me who's never even seen VR. And on the first session, which were recorded, um, she was making uh, furniture at, like by the end of the first session, which I don't know, again, if anyone's listening who's ever taught something like Maya, you can teach Maya for three days and still not get an output that's worthy of, of, of showing online or anything. You know, it's, uh, it, it, it really is. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. It's a designer's dream come true because, you know, if you're, if you just have these ideas stuck in your head as a designer and you just want to get them out as fast as you can, this is one of a range of new creation tools that, that, that you can just, I mean, look at, you know, you don't even need to be concentrating. The, the stuff just comes out. It's, it, and it's great to hear, you know, yourself, you work around the creative industry and you, you know, you're always trying new tech. It's, it's great to hear you say, you just dive in and you, and you, and you, and you're creating super, super quickly. So any more questions on that list? Oh, look, we've made a robot with wheels. That's cool. We'll make them into, we'll make that into a, a breathing apparatus. I knew I'd get some sci-fi stuff in there before if I just waited around long enough. So. Um, I mean, gravity sketches, I, I, there isn't anything like gravity sketch for one reason. So there are lots of these kind of apps, but because gravity sketch has got the subdivision modeling as well as the nerves based stuff, um, it makes it new, different in the marketplace. It, 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 it there, there, there just isn't um, anything like it on the, you know, and if there is, I'll be using it. I, I, I will definitely go and have a go of it if I, if I find it. Um, there's tilt brush. People always talk about that. Um, and tilt brush is, is a stroke, much more stroke based than this. So if you're, you know, if you like to sketch more, or if you're a, an illustrator more than a modeler, then tilt brush might be for you. And there's another one called quill as well. Um, so you you can you know you can really find the, the 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 solution for you. This one for this kind of industry, if you hang you know if you if you're thinking about um, more mechanical, definitely as I've said a number of times now, it's much more um, hard surface. You know vehicles. I think this is the much better option for you. Obviously, you can do as you can see. I can do characters very very quickly. It's 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 super easy. To, to do it. I mean, that, that could be the pilot, you know, for the, for the ship we haven't yet designed. It's, it's, this is where designers are really changing the, the, the way they do things. If you do design that as a, let's, let's say we just, I'm sure we're running out of time, but say we did design this thing here in front of me, let's just open its chest cavity a bit. Say we wanted to put something in there. Say it's now a giant robot. Look at that. So that's huge. Let's fill the back in. It's like balloons now, isn't it? It's bonkers. So that's now a chest cavity, but watch this. You can now put in an avatar. Let's make him white so you can see him. In fact, no. Yeah, let's put in there. And then you've got this ability here, which is the ability to pose him as well. So as a reference tool, if you're designing a car or if you're designing a bike or anything like that, you've got tools in here that you, I mean, I'm making a hash of him doing this, but you, you, you get the idea. You know, you can do things like this. And that would take half an hour in Maya or something like that. So it's, it's, it, it, it's I know I'm waffling a bit now, but I, I do get quite excited about this kind of technology. It, it does, it does, it's just incredible to, to be a designer at this at this time in the world. You know, I know COVID's not brilliant, is it? But it, 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 it to have this this sort of stuff at your fingertips now is just stunning. It's just so so interesting. Yeah. 
it's it's already five past six. I mean, I'm oh, I'm not going to close this session right now, right here. So don't don't worry. If 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 you stick around, I stick around. Um, we've got two more comments and questions. So one was because you mentioned it earlier. Uh, somebody on um, the panel is an illustrator. Excellent. So good with organic and soft services and. Um, uh, curious about those hard and mechanical stuff um, in in uh, Gravity Sketch. But um, I mean, as you mentioned, you, you could use this to 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 get a rough sketch in terms of proportions and, and necessary references to, to human sizes or anything else that you're working on, and then go back on the Cintiq and turn that into um, um, into something that looks softer than than the mechanical rig that you have here, right? Yeah. Well, the the process that we do a lot is we we, we do go back and forth because we obviously I'm a I'm a I'm a two D you know a two D I'm an I'm an illustrator by trade. You know, I started there wasn't computers when I started. I was I was drawing with a pen and pencil. But what what is useful is for there's lots of different ways that we we integrate this with the Cintiq. So one would be this, which is we can take the camera. Um, and we go and we start photographing and, and why that's useful is one I can do this which is it just give it a moment there oh where did it go oh it's gone away oh it's because I didn't switch it on I'm just being an idiot sorry um, there you go so I'm bringing the imagery into the scene that's one way of doing it. But this imagery can go out. So you can take that back to your Cintiq and you can use that for your concepting. So if you're trying to do, if you're an illustrator and you want to do a shot of say, this guy is looking up at a giant robot and you, you can't quite get your angles right or you can't, I have to turn off that and I have to turn off. Do you remember we put this on? the okay. vertical lock. I can now move any, this will make you a bit sick if you're not used to it. Um, I can now do an over the shoulder of this character to this character and then go back here and take this picture. And that gives me the, look at that, there's your framing straight away. Now that, that one simple way of doing that is to just take the photograph, take that photograph back out, whip it onto Photoshop on your Cintiq paint over it and you're, and you're good to go. And you can do it. I, I mean, I'm doing comics at the minute and, and that's how I'm doing it. I'm, you, I'm laying it out like that. But what you could also do is you can take the, you can clean this, this scene out a little bit. Bear in mind, I'm, on, I'm, I'm not moving here because of the, the you know, I'm in a camera. So uh, I'm trying not to, to, to move around, but I could literally keep it there and I can move around it. Um, so, you, you know, you, you can jump back and to, to the Cintiq. So, you, you know, I could say right now, I want to now, I want to go back and just sketch some more here. I'm just not feeling it. Um, and it's nice to sometimes just take this back out. I won't do it now and go, right, I'd like to just talk about the flowing lines for the hair on this one. And that would be much better than a control, much, much better than a hand controller is a pen. And, and I think that's where that's where I go back, where I, where I want to get back to my organic and fluid lines, mm. um, and I, and I, and I do that a lot. You, you know that that that's that that's where I use that the most. And if you're an illustrator, again, this is a superb tool for you. Can see, you know, I think anyone who who's watching who does this for a living will understand why I'm so enthusiastic about it. It's a genuine enthusiasm because yeah. I, I can make imagery that would take me quite a while in, in other ways. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great tool. If, the, if, if whoever that illustrator is wants to contact me, I'm more than happy to, you know, cool. to, to share some more secrets or anything like that. I've got a YouTube channel at Southern GFX. So all of this is covered on that YouTube channel. So, so anything else in there? You're in... Um, we've got one technical question concerning, um, is there much of a barn door effect with the Rift S? No, no more than, um, uh, I mean, it is tight. It, the, the, the field of view is, is not brilliant. Um, and there are new ones coming on the market all the time, but you don't notice it after a couple of minutes. It's not, it's not, I mean, barn door just sort of like is, you know, it's a, it's a visual thing. The new, the new Oculus quest that's just come out today, yesterday, as I said, it's, it's no better on that 
to be fair. Um, the Vive is a little bit better for me. Um, uh, and there are a couple of really expensive ones that are huge in terms of the field of view. But it, it, it's, a, it's an ever-changing field. It, mm. it, you know, it's, it's an arms race now for these people to make this you know this technology but yeah it's not it's not something that i would say is is, is a problem i saw, i don't even think about it once i'm in right so it's 10 past six it's over 10 past six now um i'd be super curious i mean i can't stop watching you um and we have now what three objects in in the vr space i'd be super curious to see how they now look on the on the cintiq yeah let me try and Remember, I've got this beta version, so I don't know if I can do that with this one. Um, let me just save it. Just give me a moment. I'll certainly try for you. Because in 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 the real workflow, there's probably going to be a lot of going back and forth between Cintiq yeah. and, and when, VR, when, right? When you um, when you have it set up, and the, the 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 difficulty that we have when we're presenting is we've got three 4K screens and two. <laughs> True. So I've got I've got the screen in front of me a 4K. I've got the Cintiq 4K. I've got the monitor on this side that you can't see. Plus two two K ish screens in my eyes. So what what happens is we get technical issues that are nothing to do with the software, um, or I do anyway. Maybe you know I've, I, I've tried this for years to try and you know I've got a, a humongous like Lenovo machine driving all of this with an RTX um, 5000, and it's it's like bulletproof, but. It, it, it still has problems with that amount of feeds coming out. So let's just save that again. Call it Wacom 2. I'm not making any promises here. No worries. So we should it's have zoomed. Seen. It's covered. We're used to hiccups. Yeah. I don't like it being a hiccup because <laughs> it would be nice to not. Let's see if I can do it. We're just going to stop sharing for a minute, and while I'm doing it, if there is anybody left that wants to ask a question, by all means. Well, there's still everybody on board, so oh, cool. guys on, on the panel, just shoot your questions. Take the opportunity now. Um, Glenn is checking what he can do. So I'm going... Seeing if I can bring it in. It might not like it. It really might not like it, but then I've put the pen. Down. Look, oh my gosh. So there you go. So that's, uh, <laughs> you can't see this yet. <laughs> I think I've made something horrendously monstrous. So let me what show you my, let me reveal my new manga creation. <laughs> Whoa. So as you can see, this this is uh, humongous. Uh, that's got everything in there that I just made. Um, it, it it's massive. Now um, I, I wasn't in any way trying to to, to, to do it in a, an optimized way, but what it's what it proves is it can handle it. Um, what what I do now is I'd have to get the view right. So we'd start using. Uh, we'd, we'd be moving this view. I don't know if anyone can see me doing this around the side, but you can you can just literally snap round to the different views, um, uh, bring it round to this side and say, right, give me the back. And then I can start sketching on there. You'd have to make sure that all of your, um, the mirroring is the same. Uh, you can see, well, you can see it there. So if I, if I'm in that mode now and I want to start thinking about those wings again, I can literally, you can see how responsive the Cintiq is here. This, this, this is where, and remember I said about the hair, that's where I would have done this, where I, where right. I would have preferred to do that. So you could say now, and what I suppose this is a good way of showing it. I could say, right, that, that bit there, that head, I wasn't happy with it. So if I wanted to now redesign that helmet, I would say faceplate here, Japanese kind of, you know, samurai kind of faceplate. I would say, give me something mechanical here to drive this jaw. And then, then the something where this is like the neck here and then i think coming down to the chest but then lots of these pipes that i was doing here i bring these here and you can see again it's much more fluid with a pen so this is where this is where the the the, the strength of the cintiq comes in and i could then jump back 
into VR. I've just whipped it around, sorry. Um, I could jump back into VR and I could then convert that, pull that out, make it into 3D. And then if I don't like that, I mean, again, this is completely unplanned what we're, what we're, um, what we're showing here. And that's a, that's a great thing to see because this is how it sometimes happens in the, you know, as I'm designing now, I might just say, right, um, I'll go green just so that you can see what I'm doing. I might not like this profile or I might want a great big fat belly on the, on this guy. And, and I might want, maybe his arms not working. So maybe if I just draw the muscles coming out the front, I can work out the arms in a, in a different way. Um, but again, you could, I think that was a great call. Uh, you're, you're in, uh, you know, sh showing it. Um, I mean, that's perspective now, by the way, I didn't show you that before. I was showing you in orthographic cause I, we did start mechanical. So, I don't know how this always happens, but I always end up going into organic and crazy monsters and stuff. So Start with a bike and you end up having I know, a I know, and I'm really sorry because I really tried hard today not to go to dragons and to, and to, and to crazy creatures, but it's, you know, that's, that's what I get paid for, really. So, and we are after six, so maybe, I'm, maybe I'll be, be forgiven a little bit. I think what I'm trying to show is how creative this solution is that, you know, I wouldn't be without my 24. My Cintiq 24 is what drives everything I do. It's, it's my central hub for everything I do. Um, the pen is the Pro Pen 3D, which gives you no eraser on the end, if anyone's looking at my camera. Um, I'm going to switch back to my... Um, I'm going to stop sharing this monster now. So, uh, yeah, so the Pro Pen 3D is, you've, you've got a range of pens. If those of you that know Wacom well will know all of this. Um, so it goes all the way back to the original Pro Pen. Then you've got the Pro Pen 2, which is probably the de facto pen of the industry. I'd say that that is, <coughs> that's probably the pen that, that I spent most of my career with. And then there's the newer one, which has got two features that I love, which is there's no eraser, which I've never, ever used an eraser in all the years I've owned a Wacom. Um, but it's got a third button. So when you're using something like Maya or Cinema or Blender or any of them, you can configure it like a three button mouse. So that, that's, that's the, that, the Cintiq 24 um, and, and a VR helmet is my m most used setup now. So. Any more questions or no anything more. relevant, hardware or software? Questions that came in. Maybe, maybe one last question before we wrap it up. Um, you touched it briefly before, um, but what would be the minimum requirements in terms of specs to, to run a setup? Like, like not your setup, but like the, the basic yeah. you just men mentioned. Okay, so, so we train this stuff in here. So, so we know what the minimum spec is in reality, not what it says on the box. So I won't train on less than, so in terms of the PC, it doesn't matter, but we always try and get an i7, which pretty much you can't get, you can buy lower than that, but I wouldn't recommend it anyway. So any of the gens of i7, uh, Intel, I don't know about AMD because we don't use them. And then GPU, which is the most important part, I wouldn't now go below a 1060 Ti NVIDIA or equivalent. So we have about four or five 1050 Ti's and they're okay, but they're starting to, because of this, because we've had upgrades of hardware and we've had upgrades of these, this, this software and the requirements are getting higher and higher, the 50s, the 1050 Ti's, which are cheapest chips, they start. I wouldn't recommend anyone go for them. So, you know, a really, if you want to start, try and look for a 1080 Ti or above. There's two generations above that now. There's the 20s and the 30s, which I haven't got one yet. I don't. I don't really. I, I'm not an early adopter when it comes to GPUs because there's usually so many problems. So, um, that would be the base minimum, really. RAM don't go below 16. If you go below 16 gig anyway on any machine, you can get into problems. But 16 will be your bare minimum. Um, Gravity Sketch, when it's NURBS based, splines and all of that, that's quite low impact on your resources. If you get into things like Oculus Medium, you're talking something called voxels, and that can be heavy, heavy low. That's like a that's, that, that's basically like millions and millions of polygons. What you're seeing here is is a lot lower in terms of, of file sizes, um, and then, and then in terms of again, it doesn't matter what you use. You can't use a Mac, generally speaking. You know that you can you can 
get a Mac and make it work like a PC. Well, that's pointless paying that kind of money. But but Apple haven't really gone for the VR market, as everyone will know. So you need to be looking at a workstation. Um, I favor Lenovo simply because we started working with them this year and we're trying to break all of their stuff to, to, to show them at shows. And this is a P520 with um, this 64 gig of RAM. So I'm on a, the higher end of the spectrum here. And we've got this RTX 5000, which is literally like you could throw rocks at it and it, and it wouldn't make a difference. So it's a, it's, if you talk to, if anyone is interested or anyone wants to know more about that, Craig's on the call, just, just call uh, Primo IT and, and just get some idea of the specs. But he would be able to tell you much more than, than, than I would or confirm what I've said if you're, if you're a um, if you're in the industry and you're thinking of these kind of these purchases, then you need to talk to people who are using the software you're going to use. Don't don't rely on anyone else. Right. Now, if this was a real event, you would probably have a big round of applause, or you'd be seeing people like glued to their chair, like totally mesmerized, as I'm usually um, when when we do demo sessions like this. Um, I see no more questions coming in. Um, I think we covered a lot, um, going from technical hard services to um, to soft and biological forms, organic forms. Um, covered all the technical questions and experience and how tos. Um, I think it was a very very enjoyable ride. Thank so you. thank you very much, Glenn. Anytime. I'm, uh, if anybody wants to contact me or, or follow me, it's, it's Southern GFX. So Southern and then GFX on, the, on any media, on any social, really. So uh, YouTube is my favorite one at the minute. We're trying to push a, a new YouTube channel. Um, and obviously, I, I, I speak confidently about Wacom products um, anywhere in the world, really. So uh, I'm sure I could refer them to you uh, or anyone else from Wacom that's on. So the panelists agree, well done from Keith. So thank you, Keith. You're a superstar as always. I know <laughs> Keith. All right, time to wrap this up. Thanks again, Glenn. I've got two more slides, I think, that I want to share with you with a couple of um da -da -dum. let me take over the screen. Um two more slides. One is from Primo IT. Um, and that is the special offer that we have for you in place. This is about the Cintiq 16 and the Cintiq 22. Um, pen displays, slightly smaller size um, than the big 24 that, that Glenn is working on, or 32 that Glenn is working on. Um, they at the moment come with a bundle that includes a stand for the Expressway remote that we shown at the beginning of the webinar. Go over to their website, uh, primoitcouk forward slash CMS forward slash Wacom minus October, and you will get uh, voucher codes that will uh, open up this special offer for you. And if you do have any questions because the voucher code is not working or you want to learn more uh, or you just want to chat, um, reach out to our partner with the email address below or just give them a ring as well as. Um, Glenn, they're always happy to help and support and find the best solutions for you. Um, and that was it from us. Um, thank you very much for listening and following us. Um, it's been a very, very nice webinar, very exciting and visually always strong because so much happening. If you have any specific questions related to Wacom products, please do reach out to Jason, jason.walden at wacom.com. He's happy to uh, answer all your questions concerning Wacom and what we can do for you, for your studio, for your school, uh, and whatever stuff you are looking at. Um, do follow us on social at Wacom across all the different channels. Um, and if you want to share your content and artwork and ideas, hashtag them with hashtag made with Wacom and our guys from social media will pick it up and share it if they find something interesting. Uh, again, Primo IT. Um, at okay, that's a funny app. No, that's the link to the website, but I'm sure you will find them. And obviously, um, Glenn, as he has already mentioned, find him as Southern GFX on Heartstation, on the internet, and also on Instagram. Some really, really, really cool stuff. 
thanks again from our side. It's been a very, very entertaining, fun and interesting Wednesday evening. Um, thank you. Take care. Goodbye. And see you around next time. Thank you, Glenn. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. See you later.